Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Canada Stays uh, new site demonstration webinar. Um, a couple of things to note before we get started is, A, we've never done this before as a company, so I'm going to apologize up front if anything goes haywire or awry, but know that we're doing our best. Um, what we've started off with, though, for you is some housekeeping uh, kind of rules or, or help for you guys, because um, we thought if we needed them, maybe you needed them. Um, if you've chosen to log in with your computer, computer to listen to this webinar rather than calling in on your phone, please ensure your volume is set to high so you can hear everything. Um, if at any time you have any technical issues, you have a red box in the top right hand corner. Um, if you open that or expand that, you can scroll down to the chat box in that function. You'll be able to chat um, to a couple of people who are on standby um, looking to help. If you accidentally lose this screen, look for that this blue flower. You see that blue flower? It's going to be probably either down here on your dock or depending on what kind of um, computer you're on. But uh, all you have to do is click on that and it'll pop the screen back up. Um, for a better experience, we suggest you maximize the screen um, when I get to that point when, as soon as we're done this one. Um, you'll be muted throughout this entire presentation. So if you have any background noise, dogs barking, children, what have you, don't worry, we don't hear it, and nor does anybody else. And for any questions, again, if you'd like anything answered as we go through this demonstration, um, send them through the chat box um, in your top right-hand corner in the same place that you would have technical issues. Otherwise, we'll also be capturing all your incoming questions and we'll get an email out to everybody who's on this call in the next 48 hours. So you are everybody ready? So why don't we sit back and enjoy um, what we're about to show you. I'm going to now, I think, get out of this screen. And I don't know how. Sorry, here's the first technical glitch. It's not letting me toggle between, there we go. And now I can map. Don't save this and let's go directly to our new site. So welcome to our Canada Stays homepage. Um, a few things that we've done quite differently with this is um, we start off, I'm gonna start off by being what I call the traveler, a traveler who's looking to book a property. And then from there, I'll move us into the owner dashboard and into the back end to see how that looks from an owner's perspective. But for the traveler side, what we did first and foremost is we've actually um, expanded our search capability. So now from this box here, we can search by keyword, point of interest, landmarks, and it returns exceptionally accurate results. We've created um, uh, a tie-in with Google and Google Maps so that as somebody types in, um, I'm going to go to the demo site that we created. As somebody types in Hawkstone, Ontario, you see how it automatically starts dropping down the words that relate to that search to make it a quicker for people to search, but also more importantly, to get very granular with the search so that individuals who might not think they were looking for Hawkstone, Ontario, instead were looking for maybe the Hawkstone Community Hall could find that instead. So it's really, really granular search. Um, then the traveler would put in some dates that they're looking to book. Maybe it's for the um, upcoming long weekend. I think it's those dates. Um, how many guests they're looking for in Hawkstown, Ontario. Oh, didn't finish that. Sorry, I didn't click on that. There we go. Um, and then you hit search. And up should pop and will pop the demo listings that we've created. So just so everybody understands, what we've done today is created Hawkstown, Ontario as a demonstration um, listing account and, and, and owner account so that these listings are live. This is absolutely on our live site, um, but the listings themselves are pretty much what we call test listings. Um, so what you see here now from the traveler side are, is a very different search uh, result. They have these um, tiles, these property listing tiles with their first hero image that they can scroll down and through. As you can see, I'm going all the way down. We've created 11, so you'll see the 11 here. Um, each of these can scroll through photographs within the tile themselves. You see the nightly rate or the default rate that this owner has has um, input in their back end. So $100 Canadian a night. You get the name of the property. You get how many bedrooms. You see how many guests it can accommodate. If you had reviews, there would be stars here next to the five that actually draw 
push the bedrooms and the guests further down this way, but you'll see five stars. We just didn't imp input one of those today for us. You also notice on the right hand side, this map. So this is Google Maps now. As I hover over these tiles of the listings, you'll see the orange pin popping up and down. So it shows the exact location. If I want to, if I don't want to search this way through these tiles, I don't want to do this. I can actually go to the all the green dots and hover over different ones. You see that green, the orange dot is moving. Hover over that, click on it, and up will pop the actual listing right from the orange pin. And again, the same functionality is there. You can scroll in this orange, in this little tile, you see the same information that we had in the larger tile. We are trying to get to the point where a traveler, however they're searching, your result, your listing is showing up. So if they want to do it by the map, let's do it by the map. If they want to do it by these tiles, let's do it by these tiles. If they want to do it from the homepage because they know the listing ID, do it that way. Um, it's all about being um, as much as we can, everything for the traveler. The other thing we can do, Hawkstown, Ontario, just for everybody's sake, is a really tiny community. And we can see that because of only these few pins that are there. If a traveler lands on this page and says, well, you know, it's too small. Maybe I want to expand it. You see these um, plus and negative signs. All they have to do is really, this plus, this brings it in further, zooms it in. So there's nothing more there. But if I go out, just one or two, so you see these green pins that start to pop up. These are different listings. Very close by Hawksbury, Hawkstown, sorry. I can click on that pin. I can see that listing. I can scroll through it and say, you know what? I'd rather go there than in Hawkstown, Ontario. Maybe this is close, close enough by. It's really convenient for um, people who are looking to book properties uh, really close by family or looking to buy book properties that are very close by each other, like the, maybe it's a group of, sorry, didn't mean to do that. Maybe it's a group of four or five families coming together. And this way you can see on the map, these are really close by, or these three are really close by. Let's see if we can book all three of them together. So the travel, so the search piece became uh, a very important part of why we redeveloped the site to make it better for traveler searching, but also to make it more relevant for your listing to appear in their search and not be so tied down to, to regional nodes as we called them before. Um, I'm gonna zoom back in, oops, sorry, wrong way. <laughs> gonna zoom back in now to Hawkstone, where we were, and we can start talking about the, the particular listings that we built for this demonstration today, which did not come up there, so I'm gonna, Go back to here, go back to my, there we go. There are the, these are the listings we created today. Um, what else can I tell you? Um, what I would like to do now is take you through the traveler experience on booking a property or sending an inquiry. I'm gonna do it through her because I'm gonna pretend I wanna go fishing with my family. So when you click on any of those tiles and you wanna get more information, you get taken to the listing page, the details page. So the same photographs are here. Here you see on the top right hand corner, because I put the details in at the beginning on my search, how much my trip should cost me, my dates are available, how many guests, and I can hit request a book right here if I'm ready. Let's not go there yet. I'm going to come back to that. What I want to show you more importantly is this, as I scroll down this page, here's all that information more information that a traveler would most likely would want. The description is here, it's collapsed. I can click on it to get more. Here are the rest of the photos. You notice how this request to book drops down as I scroll down the page. That's to help the traveler, once they're really comfortable with what they see, put, a, put through a booking request and let's get, you, let's get them into your property. Um, to see more of these photos, you see how there's 15. All you do is click on any one of them and it launches a photo uh, carousel and these arrows let me scroll through all the photos it looks great what I really want to call your attention to is this button down here the chat function in the right hand corner this is new to our site as well if I'm having troubles at all as a traveler I'm gonna get out of this so if I'm having troubles booking maybe filling this out or understanding the rates table I can click on the chat button input my phone number and I'm just gonna 
I'm not going to do it because it might actually get our customer service agent to, to chat me back and then type my messages and it could say, hi, I'm having trouble. I'm having trouble with, um, it's as simple as that. You start typing in and when you're done with your question, you hit start chatting and up will pop. We're here for you. Um, I'm going to actually minimize this now because I don't want to disturb our customer service team, but they would start typing back to me and it would say, hi, you know, it's Heather calling. What, how can I help you today or something? They'll answer my questions as I go. Um, the rates table is exactly as I, as an owner, have put them in. So you'll see that I have special rates for winter and fall and summer. I have a default rate set. So the default rate set is the default is the rate that see that hundred dollars here on the nightly. It's the hundred dollars that appeared. Uh, if I go back a page to those tiles, it's that's the default rate that you, is the first thing that the traveler will see. Um, additional fees, taxes, and charges. I open this up and I see as a traveler, oh, okay, Emily also has a boat fee for $500, a damage deposit, um, an extra person fee, a pet fee, a cleaning fee. So these are all different fees that the owner can actually put into their rates table that is now itemized and um, individualized for that traveler. Um, I'm going to take you through the back end and show you how that's all done. I just wanted to show it to you from the traveler's perspective. So the point is, there is 100% um, transparency in all the rates. The traveler knows exactly what they're spending and what they're spending it on. Let's go down to the calendar. So th this hasn't changed that much from a traveler's perspective. Orange, this yellow means it's booked. White means it's available. Here are the amenities for the property. And no reviews yet. And the final bit is this little listing location with exactly where it's located. Oh, you can see in the chat function, somebody actually, and there you go. There's Maya. Good morning, Emily. How can I help you today? And this is how we would dialogue back and forth until my issue was resolved. I'm going to now minimize it again. So you see how this request to book keeps following me around as I pop up and down the page. We really, really want to encourage the traveler to book your property. If they're spending this much time on a listing, they're interested, let's get them to send through a booking request. Um, if the traveler wants to not send the booking request, but wants to send me a message instead, right here is my owner information. This is always on the, every page. Um, I've uploaded a logo because, you know, I'm pretending I'm a property manager, but this could, this, if this wasn't a property manager and you're an individual property owner, um, either your initials, it defaults to your first and last name's initials. So in this case, for me, it would be ER. Um, there is a place in the back end to actually upload a photo and we strongly encourage you to do that because it looks more, it's warmer, it feels more um, I, I don't want to say the legitimate, but it gives them something to look at to say, hey, that's a real person. This must be a real listing. This must be a great property. So if I want to send a, a, uh, an email to the property owner, here it is, send a message. Up it pops. It populates the dates that I've already put in at the beginning and the number of guests. And here I would put in my name, my last name, my email address, I'm going to just populate it from here. Um, this is pre-populated depending on, I think, where you're from. Um, my phone number. There's a phone number I've used before. A description. Hi, um, your proper, oops, property looks fantastic. We're a small family looking to go Oops, fishing. Um, we're, oh my goodness, my typing's not great today. We're quiet and non-smokers. Can you tell me if you have a Sandy, uh oh, sorry, <laughs> Sandy Beach? And then all I would do is send inquiry. And off it goes. Uh oh, looks like you already have an account using this. Oh, sorry. It won't let me because it pretends it already knows me. Okay, sorry about that. A little bit of a glitch. So I'm going to use a different email address. I think that's the issue. I have a lot. I have a few. Let's use this one. It should go through. Send inquiry. Hmm, it's not letting me. Sorry about that. I have a feeling it's because Emily Rayson is also the owner on this account. I can't send herself an inquiry. 
Um, so what I'm going to do is move on. Oh, I'm. Let me try a different email address that I was just given. It might work. Uh, send inquiry. No. Okay, let's move on because what I'm going to do is show it to you in the back end because we've populated the don't forget, this is a test account. It, although it's on the live site, it's a test account. So we have populated it with inquiries. What I'd like to do is send, show you how the, to request, a, uh, to send through a booking request now. So you can see my dates are populated and my number of guests are populated. I'm going to click request to book and up will pop a full form. So here on the traveler side, I get to say if I have pets or not, because a lot of property owners, as we know, have pet fees. So I'm going to say with pets. And it'll update. You see how it updated my rates to say, oh, there's the $50 pet fee that I need to include. And it changed the full uh, price down here. Okay, so now I'm ready to, to book. Oh, the other thing to notice is down here we have what's what we called offsite fees. Offsite fees are not including in the book, they're not included in the booking request or the payment. These fees uh, probably will need to be settled with the owner, and that's um, the damage deposit in particular. We don't we don't collect damage deposits on your behalf. That's something that um, we ask you to to enter into directly with the traveler because you're often refunding it. Um, I'm hoping anyway, um, almost in full. Um, it's the transaction part of that is something that really should be um, not in our hands, in your hands instead. So we make sure that the traveler is understanding that there might be some other fees that you will be charging um, just in case. Um, the other thing to note here is anytime you see a question mark, we have created these what we call hovers, which explains uh, what this is to whomever is the audience, whether you're a traveler or an owner. So anytime you see them, and they're throughout the front end, we call this the front end, the traveler side, and they're throughout the back end on the owner side. There's lots and lots and lots of them on the owner side. So now I'm ready to book again. So let's go to my name, my last name, my country code, my phone number, and I put this all back in because Hello? Oh, I think I'm back. Sorry about that, everybody. I think there was a little bit of a technical issue with the headset, but I think I'm back. Um, I don't even know where we left off, but I'm going to go back and ta start talking about this booking request again. Um, hmm. Told you this might be a little dicey this first time. I do apologize for that, but let's let's see if we can get through the rest of this now without um, too much too much change. Um, I think what I, I'm hoping everybody saw was that when I 
don't go back. I was told, don't go back. I'm just going to keep going. So the booking request, um, as a traveler, I put my credit card, my security card, all that information in here, and I would literally just hit submit reservation request. And when that gets submitted, what happens is the screen refreshes for the traveler and says, your booking request has been submitted to the owner. So at this point, let's go in and log in as an owner. Um, what I'm going to do is go back to the, the home page here, and you see this top right hand button, it says log in. It pulls up my a login page and I'm going to put in the login uh, for this this particular uh, backend account is of course the demo one so I'm going to sign it in as this and here's where we land this is our dashboard this is our owner dashboard if we as Canada Stays has any messages or notifications like we have a new distribution partner we're excited to announce or we're doing site maintenance, we would put it in here for you. So you would have a, a, a message from us to you. And it's a way for us to help communicate back and forth. Um, our quick links are here. The one thing to note is you see this view your pending trips. One thing that we as Canada States has to be mindful of, if you're a property owner, doesn't mean you're not also a traveler. So anytime you see the word trips, the trips is really about the traveler and what they've booked. Um, in this case, there are no trips um, because I didn't put through that booking request. And right now I'm in an owner's, I'm in the owner mode. Here's where I can have a quick link to manage all my listings. You see the number count. I have 11 of them in there. Here's where I can review my reservations. I have three waiting for me. I could add a new property here. I can update my profile. I can change my password. If I scroll down a little bit, here's where, in, again, on your dashboard, you will see all your upcoming reservations. And what we've done here is, here are the first initial, last initial of the traveler or the photo they have uploaded, the name of the property, the dates they've book, the number of guests, the cost for the trip, and what you as an owner have to do next. You have action needed on these two. I have accepted one. I have declined one. And we'll go through the reservations in a minute with everything else. The other thing I want to show you about on this page are two things. One is this little mail icon up here. You see that white dot? That white dot indicates to Emily, this owner, that there is mail waiting. If I click on the envelope, it gives me a quick synopsis of what's waiting, the first, the top three. I can click, I can see that I have seven in my inbox. I can click view inbox and take me directly there. I won't do that right now because I want to show you one other thing. I want to go back to this top right hand corner where I've uploaded our, my company logo or what have you. And if I literally just hover over it or click on it, down will scroll some more links to manage my business. I have, again, manage my listings, manage my reservations, my profile, I can log out. So I wanted just to call your attention there. Let's go back now and look at the left-hand side navigation. This will stay with you anytime you're in your back end. This is here. So you have an inbox, your listings, your reservations, trips. If you're a traveler, that's where you would go and find all your trips, your profile, and your account. Let's go through these one by one. For the inbox, the inbox is exactly what you would expect. It's where everything lands, whether it's a, an inquiry or a booking request. I scroll down and you can see I have things I'm, I'm waiting to do. You can also see on this right-hand corner the status of them. So here is something this I know is a booking request because it doesn't say inquiry. It says action needed. It gives me my clock countdown. So I still have 22 hours and 11 minutes to respond to this traveler. It, this red dot tells me that I haven't done anything. I haven't read it. I haven't opened it. I haven't responded. Again, here's the traveler. Here's her name. Here are the details of what cottage or, or cabin. Here's her message is here. Everything's waiting for me here. If I scroll down to here and you see the word inquiry, that's not a booking request. That's literally just an email through the system to you saying, here, for instance, I'm going to open Anthony's. If I open Anthony's, it takes me to a page that says, here's, here's Anthony's text. Could you please send me some more pictures of the cottage itself? Thanks. If Anthony has uploaded a picture, it would be here. Here's his name, member since. Some copy that we always have. Um, and what I can do here is one of three things. I can send them a message directly back, reply to this message here. I can tell them the property is unavailable or I can pre-approve him. 
I'm actually going to go back to my inbox for a minute because I think we've set it up with Michelle. Sorry, with Amy. Okay, so here's Amy's picture. She looks great. I think she's going to be a great um, guest in my property. But I want to ask her something more. So I open up a send a message. And here's where I can send a personal message directly to Amy. Hi, Amy. Um, can you please let me know if you, you're bringing a pet? And I would just hit send message. And out it goes. Success message sent. And there's my message to her back. So I can actually always see the thread back and forth between me and my guests. If I actually want to do something more with it, maybe the property is not available. Maybe I've booked it and I forgot to put it in my calendar. So I can tell her, sorry, Amy, um, this, is, uh, this is booked that week, um, but it's available the following week. Let me know if you're interested. And you see this feature down here, update my calendar and block. This is a really great feature for everybody because if you're not available, let's update your calendar at this moment in time. You don't have to do anything other than say, at this point, decline inquiry. And I'm going to click on it and it will actually show up in my calendar. And here's my message telling me, calendar successfully blocked for those dates. That'll allow you to keep your calendar as up to date as current as possible so that you don't get inquiries for dates that don't work for you because it's an inefficient use of your time for sure. How many of those do you want to respond to? Um, and and the, it's not the greatest experience for the traveler to, to come and do all that work to only have find that their dates are booked. Um, the other thing I can do in my inbox, which now that I've declined it, I'm going to have to go back to and find a different one to show you is, uh, let's go to Christina. It's an inquiry. I'm going to go and say, you know what, Christina, was she's, she looks amazing. I really want her to stay. Her dates line up. The rates are fine. All that good stuff. I'm going to say to her, I'm going to turn this inquiry basically into a quote back to the traveler, back to Christina to say, Christina, you look great come stay with me. And what that does is it basically allows you to input details, um, the, the price that you're charging for that week. Um, notice how we actually automatically showed them what the booking fee is um, by Canada Stays so that there's full transparency to you as the owner where our booking fee comes in. Um, total tax. So that's something right now that you're going to have to calculate uh, based on where you're coming from, because as we know, across Canada, the taxes are different. Um, let's just right now call it $100. This form, by the way, is is just at the beginning. It's at its infancy because it's going to get a lot more detailed and descriptive as we get um, a little further past the site launch. We have lots and lots of product improvements that we want to input. In this form, we want to make sure that we can put in an extra traveler fee or the pet fee because right now you have to include it here. Um, but it would be we're going to put down what we call the drop down, so you can pick those certain fees and have it roll up into this. Um, you can add, and then add a personal message. Hi, Christina. Um, I'd love to have you come stay at my property. Please accept this quote, and I would send a pre-approval. And what this does when I hit send is it does two things. It sends Christina this exact, all the specifications of that quote, and it gives Christina three days to respond. But it also tells Christina in that um, automatic message that the owner might have guests waiting for this property for these dates. So don't take t too much time. Get on it and respond quickly. And here you can see that i as you go through the um, thread again, here was her inquiry with her message to me. I sent back a pre-approved booking for that amount of money. And there's my message to her. And I can send her another message in day two, maybe saying, why don't you uh, saying something like, hey, hi, Christina, I noticed you haven't responded yet. I have another group wanting these dates. Can you please let me know? So you can continue the dialogue through the pre-approved booking process. Um, so those three states are actually really amazing. Oh, and here's back, I'm back in my inbox and you can see this is the pre-approval I sent to Christina. See, there's Christina and there's the time clock 
uh, ticking down. So I can come back in and day two and send that message or day one left. If there's 10 hours left or there's two hours left and send a message. Back to this inbox. You notice that when I actually responded to Amy, the red dot disappeared, the inquiry status disappeared, and this arrow is here. I can hover over the arrow. If you forget what the arrow is, it's because you have replied to this message. What I want to do next is go through a booking request that's come in from Michelle. So if I click on Michelle's booking request, it opens up to this, which is different from an inquiry, right? The inquiry, you had those three states. This is, you have a booking, booking request pending. You have 22 hours and four minutes to respond. I can either write Michelle a message here, or if I'm ready to accept or decline, I hit respond now. Respond now does two things. It allows me to approve or decline. It shows me all the reservation details before I hit those buttons in case I forget. Um, it allows me to actually say to Michelle, you know what, I need more time because maybe I have another party waiting to say, to, to say yes to this. And all I have to do if I need more time is click on the need more time, extend my acceptance period. So when I, if I click this, what it'll do is add 24 hours to that clock and allow the traveler to know that I've extended the time that I need to accept them. What that also does is the traveler actually can say, I don't really want to give you 24 hours. Just so you know, it's, it's, you know, it's a back and forth dialogue between you and the traveler. So if the traveler doesn't want to give you an extra 24 hours, they can actually decline that and, the, and then just get back to the regular clock. Or you can come back here and decline the booking. What I want to show you here is the reservation details that follow you. See, notice, by the way, I'm in the reservations tab down here on your left-hand side. Um, a few things to note here is all these question marks. So what was that cancellation policy? What's the subtotal? What's the processing fee? What's the commission? So in this case, there's a commission showing because this property was set up as a paper booking property. So that means that... Um, They've listed for free, but they're paying us as Canada Stays a 10% commission for every booking they accept. If you are on the subscription model, obviously this line wouldn't be there, but we've decided to include it today so you can see that it's itemized and everything is in detail. So this subtotal number, this blue number, again, you, anything blue has a hover as well. This is the total price, including all fees and surcharges for this reservation, excluding tax and damage deposit because the damage deposit is something you're collecting and then so that's the, to the total the subtotal of this and then what we're do what we're saying to you as the owner is look we're taking out if you take out the process the credit card processing fee and, our, and that commission for that property this is what you will be getting for this reservation down here are the guests information again the hovers anytime you see those question marks and then the whole trail of information that went back and forth between me and my guest if we hit approve i'm going to hit approve an immediate message goes to the traveler saying congratulations the owner has accepted your stay has approved your stay you're off and running and then at that point all that dialogue between how do i get keys how do i do this how do i do that keeps going through the process as you would normally have done it anyway um what i want to do i'm hoping i'm not going too fast for everybody but that's pretty much what i wanted to show you between this inbox I'm going to go back to it. You can see now Michelle's inquiry, what did I do with it? Here it is, was accepted. And there's the cost. And now it's turned green. Inquiry, If I, as I respond, the blue disappears, the red dot disappears. If I respond, that, dis, that comes in so you can see it. Reservations, all your reservations, pending, uh, accepted, declined, expired, they all show up here full running trail all the time. Um, and that's how you're going to manage, I guess, the inquiries and the reservations. What I'd like to do next is go into managing your listings. So if I click this button here, all my listings will, sh will be on display for me. So I can see there's what the listing ID here is, the hero image, the, the name of it, what they're under. So I've, all these are classics, so that means they're at um, the basic level. And there's my one paper booking property that we were talking about before. This is the when they expire. This is their status between published and unpublished. And then some of the actions I can take on this, I can go to the listing dashboard, I can go directly to manage calendar. 
I can manage the rates, renew, renew a subscription, I can view my listing. But what you really want to do is go through each of these. Um, if you're on a feed, by the way, if you're a feed customer, if, um, you don't you wouldn't be touching the, the, this part of the dashboard because it's all populated through your feed. But if you're not on a feed and you get to the point where you have to manage a listing, you click on the manage that one listing and it'll open up like this it'll give you that information again what product i'm under do i have a travel deal go going it'll give you a quick little synopsis of your of your listing how you're doing if you have any reviews but really what you want to do is see where these green check marks are you want to go through these because the initial state is these are actually red x's meaning they're not populated so if i go to the location it obviously has the exact address with a postal code. By the way, that's actually critical for your listing to show up properly on uh, with the, our Google search engine. Um, an exact address with an exact postal code is, is imperative. Obviously, the description is the same. The basics are the same. You're going to go through and just say minimum oc occupancy bedrooms, bathrooms. The amenities is the same. Photos, pretty simple. Drag and drop. You can change your hero image, you know, by just literally dragging and dropping it. Um, but really what we should go through are these, the rates, the fees, the calendars um, are important to go through. So right now this listing is set up with uh, the, the rates of uh, here, $100 a night, $1,000 a week, and $3,000 a month. If I ever need to change it, I can just go edit default rate. So the default rate, just so everybody has, is really clear on what that is now, the default rate is if if a traveler is searching, um, it's, it's a rate that actually allows it to be displayed in any traveler search. So if you only want to rent by the week, you would set your default rate to weekly so that you don't show up in those travelers that are looking for three days. If you have no... Um, requirement that way, then set it to nightly so that you're showing up in, a, in broader searches and everybody can see it. If you're only a 30-day um, minimum stay, set it to a month. Um, and that'll allow your search to be more pinpointed and targeted to the traveler in their search. To set a new rate, it's pretty simple. Choose your currency. That's new to us again with this site. So you can now list in US dollars um, if you are ca calling in from the States um, or the Caribbean, you can list in US dollars, we will automatically convert it to Canadian and display it in Canadian. Um, you would input your tax rate there, you would set your rate display preference to, to whatever, at this point we've done it to nightly. Um, and that, if you scroll down the page down here for the default rates, this is where it becomes actually pretty important that we set these default rates so that again, it can show up in that broader search. If I wanna add a, a a default weekend rate because we know a lot of people like to do like have a different rate for during the week uh, sorry weekend versus during a week um, you just click on that and here you see it down here this is a rate for the whole weekend so it's Friday and Saturday it's a not a per night rate so it's pretty important to know so let's say I just want to say you know what for weekends rather than do two $100 nights and because it's high you know it's, imp it's an important weekend, I'm gonna charge $500. Literally just put the number in there, save and continue, and it'll tell me up here that I've saved it successfully, and it, now it'll show up down here. See the weekend nightly rate, $500. And then now it'll display in the rates as um, a traveler puts in dates for the weekend. If I have rates that are different from just week, night, month, I go to this add new rate. Um, let's say I want to do um, uh, high season. Name it whatever you want. Oops. Tell us, tell your calendar when it starts. So let's say it's just for May 1 to May 31st. What's the minimum stay? Let's say it's three nights. So what is the high season rate? I think it's going to be, oh, that's too high. <laughs> I think it's going to be $200 a night. And I'm just going to leave it like that. Do I want to add a, an add weekend nightly rate to this new rate? Probably, because if it's my high season, I want to charge more. So I'm going to say for this period of May, charge $750 add rate. And there you can see my special season, my high season has been added. And if somebody tries to book my property between May 1st and May 31st, these are the rates that will display. 
If I want to delete the rate, I hit on the, click on the red X, I click on delete, and it's gone. It's that simple to deal with rates. Anytime I want to just add new ones and delete new ones, come in, it takes a 30 seconds, and you're, you're off to the races. Let's talk about these fees because we know that fees are a really important part of the business. So this particular listing has no fees, as you can see. Let's add some up here in the top right-hand corner. What we've done is we've created this drop-down list. If you see the word select and I click on these arrows, I can add a cleaning, a pet fee, an extra person fee, the damage deposit, and an other fee. What I'd like to show you is probably just these three because they're, these top three are all the, the same format. So an extra person fee, it's asking me, what's the fee per person per night? Let's say it's $25 and charge after how many guests? So let's say I want the, I'm okay to four guests, but on the fifth guest, start charging the $25. Is it collected with the booking? Yes or no? Because it's a fee, it's going to be collected with the booking. Is it displayed on the quote? Yes, it is. You see how these are grayed out? I can't even touch it because they are automatically going to show up in your quote. The only one that's not in this case is, is it taxable? And that's something that you would only know. So let's say you have a hot tub fee or something like that, and I'll go through that one in a minute. It may or may not be taxable. In this case, it's probably taxable. So I'm going to click yes. Tax amount to use. So what's the base tax rate? Do I need a, to enter a custom one or a the one that I set up in the rates, which was 13% for Ontario, you see how it pre-populated it there. If I needed to actually create a custom one, I would click custom, maybe it's just 5%, add fee. And now it's in my fee here. If I ever wanted to uh, uh, dismiss it or, or, or rejig it, I can just click the X, it'll delete it, and I can add a new one. What I really I want to show you next is some of the other ones. So the damage deposit's a different one because we're not collecting it and we're very clear about it. We're not collecting it. Oops, sorry. We don't want to collect it at all. Again, it's something that we want to display to the traveler. We want to be we want them to be aware that this is coming to them, but we're not collecting it. So what is that damage deposit? You can make it a flat dollar amount. You can make it a percentage of the rental. It's completely at your control. Flat dollar amount is you really just put in what the fee is here, maybe it's $100. If you are wanting a percentage, you click the percentage of a rental and you say 5%. And you cannot click connect collected with booking, you cannot click taxable because that's something again that's completely and utterly in your control. But you add the fee. And this way, this damage deposit will be displayed to the traveler, they'll know that you need to collect it. The last fee I want to take us through is this one called Other. If you have something that we didn't recognize yet, maybe you have a, um, uh, a boat rental fee. Um, and it's a flat dollar. Is it a flat dollar or is it a percentage of it's the same kind of thing at this point? So it's a flat dollar. Maybe I'm charging $50. Um, it's collected with the booking. And this I could say, maybe not. Maybe I collect it when you come. Maybe I but it will still display to the traveler as there is a $50 fee and it's taxable. So same kind of thing there. I'm going to add the fee and you can see there it is. So now if somebody tra wants to book this property, they're going to get the rental rate. They're going to get my boat fee. They're going to see the damage deposit and they're going to get a full subtotal of what that property is going to cost them. Moving on, let's go to the calendar. I don't want to spend a lot of time on the calendar, but there's one function that we've added in that I think it's worth highlighting. These three buttons, available, reserved, blocked. So available is white, means you're they're just totally open. Reserved means it came through the system. It was a booking request that you accepted. It was a booking um, request that you said block my dates for. Those are the two things. The red one or the pink one, the blocked one, is something you manually come in. So because we all know you're managing multiple calendars and what have you. But you can come in and block off dates anytime you want. So I'm going to show you how to do that because it's um, it adds um, – it's not working. Okay, sorry. Let's go back to the calendar. What I want to do is show you how to block dates because what we've also done in this version is we've allowed um, and, dis and show visually how to – what it looks like to check in and check out on the same day. So let's say I have 
uh, it's blocked. Let's say I have a block date I want to add. I think I have to hit continue. Nope, sorry. I'm going to go here and try and block my day. Oh, here, sorry, add block date. Oh my God, I do apologize for that. Add block date. So let's go back and I'll show you where that was. Up here in the top right-hand corner, add block date. Check in on April 24th, check out on April 27th. And I can make notes saying, um, my mom is coming. <laughs> and I click on block date. And you'll see, here it is in the calendar. If I have somebody checking in this afternoon on the 27th, add block date, check in April 27th, check out April 30th, um, my sister is coming. Block date. And now you can see on the calendar, there's one stay, there's a second stay, and it allows me to check in and check out on the same day. It also keeps me a running tab of all my um, reservations and dates coming through. Um, so that's it on the calendar. I think the calendar is actually going to get, again, as we go through the next uh, three to six months, a lot more improvements to that as well. But the check-in, check-out was something that we heard loud and clear was required by everybody and it was important feature. So we added that in for this. I know we're coming close to the end of our um, demo, but there are two other things I want to be able to show you. Um, actually, one on, this, on the listings in particular is the payout methods, um, which are under profile. So if I go to profile, sorry, it's under account. If I go to my account, um, you'll see like notifications, order history, payment methods, meaning how are guests paying you, but how, more importantly, how is Canada Stays going to pay you? How are we going to get you your money when we're holding booking requests for you? So we have, um, I'm going to actually get rid of this one so that you can see. We can add um, payout methods have improved. So we've expanded our payout methods to um, allow for four different payout methods. Um, one is PayPal. One is direct deposit, which we always had. A third is electronic money transfer. And fourth is, if you're call it, coming from international, um, the SWIFT transfer, which is the same thing. So to go through, you'd have to put in your, um, I'm going to auto-populate this, but you know your city, your town, your address, save and continue. And up here are the four different um, potential payout methods that are available to Emily because she's in Canada, I guess. So... If I want to do, if I want to set up PayPal as, as the way that Canada Stay should pay me, then I'm going to click on PayPal. I'm going to hit save and continue, and I'm just going to set it up. What's my, my PayPal email address? It's emily at me.com. I'm going to confirm that, emily at me.com. Save and continue. And there it is. Already added to my back end. And now Canada Stays is aware of how you would like us to pay you, and that's the method we use. You can add more payout methods by this button. You can delete payout methods by just deleting it. So that's a new feature for us that we have various payout methods available to everybody. A um, couple of other really key points before we wrap up are under profile. Um, if you have 11 plus properties, you are considered what we call a property manager and you will see this link called a brand page. The brand page is something unique um, to Canada Stays. Um, it's brand new to us. So you put in your company name, your URL, a short description. You can use this drop down to say, am I a property manager, a property owner, an agency? You can upload a short logo, a small little kind of icon logo, and you would click save brand page. And what I would do now is show you what that looks like. So if I go to my profile, my brand page, here's a page just for you as your as this property manager. You got a big hero graphic, your icon, here's your company, here's your 50 words kind of thing or less. Most importantly, here are all your properties. All my properties are here. And what this allows me to do is I can send travelers directly to my profile page to book my properties. So it's only available right now to brand uh, property managers with 11 pro plus properties. But if you are on the call with that, you should get this set up as fast as you can because it's a page that lives on Canada Stays, but it showcases, it allows you to showcase absolutely all your properties to the traveler. Um, 
If I go back now, I also want to show you this document manager. So we heard loud and clear that a lot of owners want to be able to auto respond with a document, whether it's an application form, a vetting form, what, you know, whatever you want to call it. We have, a, um, have what we call a document manager that allows you to upload up to five different documents. And here's where you would do it. You would literally um, choose a, a document. It would go to your desktop to say, I don't know, upload this, but I'm not going to. And then you would click upload. And here are three that we've actually populated already. So what does this do? If I scroll down this page, here are all my 11 properties. What I can do on this particular listing is I can go to this drop down, find the three documents and say, you know what, every time a booking request comes in for this one, send them a rental agreement. And I would toggle that on. Some of them, I might not want anything. If I want this listing to not have the rental agreement, but to have uh, house rules, click there and toggle it on. So now every time anything books on this particular property, a house rules will be automatically sent. If anybody books this one, the rental agreement will automatically be sent. And this hopefully allows for a lot more efficiencies of time for everybody in particular, you guys who you know are con constantly sending out documents to travelers. Um, the last thing I want to show you is under my contact information. So new to this site as well is to verify your email address and your phone number. And what does that mean? It's actually really, really simple. It takes less than 30 seconds to do. Um, if you see how the words verified are there, I'm going to actually delete my phone number because I'm not going to, because I, I want to take us through the process. So if I'm on my phone number, I'm going to add it here. I'm going to just click on, um, uh, I need my phone though. This is actually my cell phone number, so please don't copy it <laughs> um, because I want to show you the, how this works. So I'm going to verify by SMS, which means by text, or have the system call me. I'm going to do it by SMS because you won't be able to hear the system call me. So what this has done is it sent me a verification code to my cell phone immediately. So now I'm going to put in my verification code by text and I hit verify code and now my phone number has been verified same thing with the email address your email address will be verified and what does that do it gives confidence to the traveler because this verified badge or mark is on your listing this owner has been verified it adds legitimacy to you as an owner it instills confidence in our traveler so it's actually an important piece I encourage everybody to go in and do it right now <laughs> Um, the other thing, I guess, in terms of the last, I guess, point I want to show you I, um, on this is to say this system was really built with you guys in mind. It, it incorporates, I hope, a lot of the changes you have been asking for over the last six to eight months. Um, we are at the starting block on this one. We will do a lot more. We are going to incorporate a ton of new features. We have, a, we have a huge backlog of product improvements and we call them our wish list or parking lot issues that we all want to do a lot more for. If you have questions and need answers, we are here all the time, all the time. In fact, we've the one thing we did when we did this um, new site launch is we created a, a longer customer service hour. So we actually are here from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday through Friday, as well as on Saturdays now. The other way to get in touch with us is if you scroll down to the bottom of any page, the Contact Us button is always here. You can call us directly with our number. You can instant chat us all the time. There it is. You see that? And you can there's a contact form or an email form you can submit and we'll get back to you. Um, that's it for the demo. I think what I'd like to do, though, I've been getting some texts or some questions in, like since we have five minutes, um, and I thought I'd take a minute, the, the last five minutes, to answer. Uh, it looks like I have a couple here that probably a, a few have asked, so why don't we get to some of these? Um, I think one of them is, oops, sorry, let's minimize the chat. Um, one of them is uh, booking online. So. Why is it, why? Why should everybody, I get it, I'm just reading them. Yeah, why should everybody book online? 
Being online bookable is, is important for a bunch of reasons. First of all, it's the way that travelers really want to do it. They don't want to send checks or money transfers to, to, to what they're considering strangers. It provides the traveler with a ton of security to use a credit card through the system. It allows us to track. It's great record keeping. It's great receipts for them. And it gives them a, a really good sense of confidence. Plus, don't forget, they get to collect loyalty points because that's what credit cards do as well. So the, for the traveler, it's a really important piece of, of them feeling comfortable and secure. Um, don't forget, we're also these funds are sitting there for you. They're waiting for you to collect. So we pay out at the end of uh, the very first day that the traveler has has um, entered into the property. Um, and we pay it out that day. It might take two or three days post then because of the bank you know, time and all that kind of stuff. Um, but it, it, the funds are waiting for you. They, we don't do anything with that money except just hold it in a safe and secure place. And really, the, one of the last reasons why you as an owner would want to be online bookable or accept these bookings is because it allows you to get through to our distribution network. We have a hugely expanded distribution network because now if you are online bookable, you are now showing up on homeaway.com, vrbo.com, um, vacationrentals.com, and so on and so forth. There's a ton of expanded distribution, but their requirements, our distribution partner requirements are saying, if you're not going to accept the bookings, we're not going to allow you to be distributed on our properties. So it's a really important piece. It's the way the industry and the marketplace is going. There is no doubt about it. Um, the credit card, the transactions, being take using a credit card to do these transactions, it's a normal way of doing business now on the internet. It's no longer... Um, you know, this kind of insecure place. It's super safe. It's super secure. And it's the way the travelers really, really want to be able to book your properties. So please be responsive to those booking requests. Be responsive to your inquiries as well. We also know that for every um, inquiry you, you get, th that traveler has sent out five others or four others. We say for every five inquiries are sent, um, turns into a booking request and a book an accepted booking. So you need to be responsive because these travelers aren't going to wait for you. End of story. They are anxious to get a property. They want what they want when they want it. Please be responsive and know that you'll be out of time just as much as they might be out of time. It's a win-win for everybody if you guys are responding quickly. Um, another question that's come in is, uh, the the processing fee. What is that processing fee that you've seen in some of those receipts? The processing fee is very simple. It's a credit card processing fee that the credit card companies put on absolutely every transaction. It is not a Canada Stays fee. It's not something we collect and hold on to. We literally have to hand it directly over to the credit card companies. If you were accepting credit cards yourself, you would be having forced to pay that same fee. So it's nothing, we don't make money off of it. In fact, we probably lose money most of the times because it's a variable fee depending on what card is being submitted into the system. It has nothing to do with any part of our business at all. Um, one last question, because we're wrapping up here. One last question is, um, is it safe? Is it safe to actually do these transactions online? From Everybody's perspective, this industry is safe. It's really safe now. I mean, probably five years ago, we'd all think differently, but five years have passed. The security, the encryption, the um, compliance, and I'm going to use some technology words that probably nobody understands, but we're PCI compliant. We have every, every tool in place to ensure the safety and security of both the travelers as they're putting through these credit cards and you as owners as we remit these payments to you. So don't hesitate to accept those bookings. They are, it's here and now. The travelers are, are demanding it of all of us and, and including ourselves. I mean, it was a, a quite the venture to get to the point where we actually can enable that on our site. So it's something we all need to be really mindful as, of as we go through, especially this next high season, is to accept these booking requests. So again, I'm, I, I land you on this last page of how to how to get in touch with us. We are here a lot. Don't hesitate. We have lots of people here who are ready to take your questions, your answers. You, you need any help whatsoever, please reach out to us. We are happy to help. Thank you very much for your time today. Um, any feedback, any questions, any ideas, send them our way. We'd love to hear. Thanks very much.